So while our two adventurers are in a saloon, and by the way, Mandy drank the last of her whiskey, an old prospector hobbles up and asks for help. It's my fault. It's all my fault. I brought this here ancient statue I found on an expedition to another world. At first, I was overjoyed by the find. I mean, that thing. It's got to be worth a fortune, right? But ever since I took the damn thing, it has been nothing but trouble. My horse done keeled over and died on the trail. I was ambushed by demons on the way into town. And ever since I've been back, things have started going wrong for this whole place. We've been hit by three void twisters in the last week. It's cursed, I tells you. I mean, I know. I shouldn't have taken it from that ancient burial ground in the swamps. But I didn't think it would actually be cursed. I gotta put this thing back where I found it, before it kills us all. I would do it myself, but I broke my leg walking down the street. Just walking down the street. You gotta help me. Maybe this explains why this was a plague town, too. So the mission goal is the heroes must search the mines for a gate to lead them to the swamps of Dragono, and then search the swamps for the burial ground. Once they find it, they must return the cursed idol back to the proper grave it was taken from to lift the curse. There are some special rules in this one. All gates lead to Jargono. Mine clues add a gate, so any clue icon the heroes find in the mines automatically has a gate in that room. Hard to hold back the darkness. The hold back the darkness roll needs to be one higher than normal to succeed each turn. Oh, with my terrible darkness rolls, that's really going to be bad. And then find the right grave. Uh, so once they get to the graveyard, uh, we'll go through how you actually find the graves. So the objective is to find the burial ground once you find that. No expiration token is used and the room has no exits. You reveal all the growing dread cards and we start searching six graves to try and find the right one. If we actually succeed, we draw a loot card and then we also draw a gear card or gain d60 times 50 as payment. If we fail, the curse of the idol consumes the town. The heroes may not visit a frontier town, but instead must proceed directly to the next adventure. Well, that kind of stinks. So besides the couple little setup differences for this mission, pulling out the curved map tile, because that's the burial ground, uh, and pulling out the ancient statue that we drag along, because this is a vampire adventure, there are a couple of additional rules. So whenever the heroes draw one or more encounters, even in another world, roll a d6, and on a 1, 2, or 3, they also draw a vampire encounter. Uh, common enemies, the feral vampire, so whenever there's a threat card, roll a d6. On a 1, 2, and 3, instead, the heroes are attacked by vampires. And then vampire traits. Whenever feral vampire enemies are encountered on a d6, and a 1, 2, or 3 is rolled, draw a vampire trait for them. So 1, 2s, and 3s are bad when it comes to the vampires. So, with that said, we'll go ahead and get started, and of course the first thing as always is to try and hold back the darkness. And because of the hard to hold back the darkness rule, uh, I have to actually roll an 8. And we roll an 11, we actually hold back the darkness. Wow! Alright, so moving forward, Saloon Girl will move. 3, um, she actually gets to move 4 because she is swift. And she is going to scavenge and see if this does us any better than it did last time. Uh, nothing. Alright. That is her turn. Now, Big Ned, he moves the same. He has his uh, plus one agility for his boots, so he gets to move four as well. And then he will scavenge. And he finds nothing, so... That's an exciting end to turn one. Okay, on to turn two. First thing to do is hold back the darkness. And it's a seven, and we don't do it. All right, saloon girl goes. So she will move, and she will peek through the door, gaining her five experience. And her experience is actually 965. His experience, he's sitting at about 745 or 55, I'll have to look. Uh, so they're about halfway to get to the next level. So we will draw a map card. 
and we find no expiration token and on a one, two, or three it is going one way, four, five, or six it's going towards us. Okay. For the sake of a camera and because it really doesn't matter on this first one, I went ahead and just flip-flopped it. Uh, just makes things easier and because there are no rooms or anything it really doesn't make a big difference. Alright, so on to Ned. He rolls a two which gives him plus one a three, so one, two, three, they actually stay even. He will scavenge the back room because he's still partially on it and he gets nothing of course. Now hold back the darkness and of course we don't again and it's a darkness card. An unholy shrieking echoes in your mind. Each hero takes three horror hits and must roll a d6 for each token in their side bag. On the roll of a one or a two it is stolen by the mischievous spirits. Screams of the damned. Okay, so three horror hits. So three horror hits for Mandy. And she saves two of them. So she takes two, one sanity. Three horror hits for our intrepid sheriff. And he takes three horror hits. Now, unfortunately, he has several items in his side bag, five in total. So, all right. The red will be the whiskey, and the white will be the bandages, and then I'll roll the dynamite separately. Ugh! So, on a one or two it is stolen, so he's lost both his whiskey. You know what? I'm going to burn my grit to re-roll those. Oh, so he just loses one. And then now, for the dynamite. Okay, he saves the dynamite, and he's lost a whiskey. And now neither has grit. Uh, the saloon girl lost her grit in town. So, all right. Saloon girl rolls to move, one and gets a grit. Good on her. She can move two. One, two. Now, and she's going to scavenge and gets nothing. Sheriff can move four. One, he can cut across. There is room here. One. He is going to look through to the other side. He will get his five experience. We will draw a map card. Dark Stone Quarry. So the Dark Stone Quarry Exploration token. And it is the end of the turn, so we will flip it. And it's an attack. First things first, there's only one door, uh, so it's a one, two, three, four, five, six where the door is. Six, so the door is here. So place end caps. Now, on a one, two, or three, we actually get a vampire. Oh, we didn't draw for an encounter, so there was no encounter card drawn. But it's an attack, so we would draw a threat card on a one, two, or three. It is a vampire instead of a threat. It is not, it is a normal threat. And that's okay because there are threats in there, and I don't remember what's actually in here. So, a low threat, one slasher. So the slashers. Now, this is actually fun for me because I have not played the Swamps set or the Vampires, so this actually works out well for me. So, slashers are a large enemy. They have Fear 2, uh, so those are adjacent heroes you take horror hits. Uh, critical hits only reduce their defense to 2 rather than to 0. They have a defense of 4, a health of 6. Uh, their damage is D6E and 2 combat. 
um, and then they hit on a three and have a five of move. I mean, a move of five. So we'll put this down here. I'll adjust the, this back because this is where we're going. And then we have our one slasher who uh, I, I still I cannot figure out what movie these guys remind me of. Something out of a movie. So they would be across, adjacent, here, and it's just an attack, not an ambush, so let me get rid of this. Put it in my used pile. Their initiative is four, so the saloon girl actually will get to go first, followed by the slasher, followed by our intrepid marshal. And I guess they should turn and face. So, saloon girl. Um, Let's see, this was Explore, so hold back the darkness. And of course we don't. Saloon Girl can move. Um, oh, yeah. Two, I think now. Three, four, five. And then she is going to use her holdout pistol, which has a range of three. To attack, gets a hit. Defense of four. And so does no damage. Then uh, the slasher gets to go. Can he reach? One, two, three, four. Okay, can reach the sheriff. So on a one, two, three, it's our marshal. Four, five, six, it is our saloon girl. Uh, he attacks the saloon girl. So he has a combat of two, hits on threes, one hit, four, oh, see if she can defend the hit, and she does. All right, now our marshal gets to move, three, he'll move, and he will use his trusty shotgun. Six, which is a critical hit, which reduces the health to two. Ugh. And he has no grit. So, nothing there. So that was a waste of a turn. All right. So, hold back the darkness. They do, finally. Oh, and I haven't even been moving this forward, so... First room, second room. All right. Saloon girl roll to move. Uh, she'll stay where she is. She attacks. Now, with her trusty axe, once per turn, she can reroll one of her melee to hit rolls. So she will reroll this one. So she gets two hits. She will, of course, put them both. It does a six damage. So, plus one for her dirty fighting and one for her... Trusty Axe is an 8, minus 4, that gives 4 damage, which leaves him with 2 health. I'm going to do this backwards and just say he has 2 health. Well, it doesn't matter because this one's 1 less, that's going to do 3 damage, so she actually kills him outright. So that's 15 experience plus 5 for each of the 6 health, so 45. 45 experience, the Slasher dies. Now they can, uh, let's do the 45 experience, and then they can catch their breath. She, oh, had, does have a sanity, so she can heal her one sanity. I think he is going to take the grit, because he didn't get an opportunity to go this turn. And then there was only one card, so they each get to draw a loot. And so... Saloon Girl goes first, and she draws a gear card, so and gets 20 experience. So let's see, what gear card does she get? She gets Dynamite. Gain two Dynamite tokens, and then discard this card. Well, that's good. 
I've never used dynamite because I've never played the bandito. All right, and then our U.S. Marshal, Blood Money. He gets 20 experience and D6 times 25. Okay, woo, he gets 50. 20 experience and 50 gold. And that is the end of this turn. So now, hold back the darkness. And we don't again. And it's another darkness card. Tentacles from the void. Massive tentacles erupt from the floor, savagely lashing at our heroes. An ambush attack by P. Tentacles. Okay, well, I asked for new cards. P. Tentacles, the tentacles are initiative 3, melee 4, combat 3, 5 damage if you do on the brutal side, but I'm not brutal, so melee 4, combat 3, damage 3. Um, so let's see how many we have. Five tentacles in an ambush attack. So I did paint these a different color from uh, my cities, just so I could tell the difference. But uh, all right, so we're going to have one, two, three. The first one attacks Mandy. Four, five, six. They attack Ned. Six. So the first one goes on Ned. It's an ambush. Second one will go on Mandy. Third one would then be able to attack Ned. Fourth one, Mandy. Fifth one, Ned. All right, so it's an ambush, which takes them up to initiative two, which means that Mandy still gets to go first. However, Ned doesn't go first the first round. So Mandy, oh, and I did not use her comforting presence on the one round of combat we had last turn. So he actually saved one sanity and she gets 10 experience, so. She, she gets five for healing, and then she gets an additional five because of her leveling up. All right, so Mandy moves. Oh, and she gets a grit and knocks one of them over. So she is actually at her max grit. So she will attack. She hits once, but can reroll once per turn and still doesn't hit. So she will do it on this one right behind her that's attacking just her. It's defense of two. So she does two damage, plus one for her axe, plus one for her dirty fighting, actually kills this tentacle and gets her 30 experience. And that is the end of her turn. Yes. Now one tentacle is attacking her, so three combat. Uh, one hit. Can she defend it? She defends it. Now the poor marshal has three attacking him, which means nine attacks. Dig into my swamp dice. All right. Yep. Nine attacks. Oh, and on to hit rolls of six, they ignore his defense. Oh, my goodness. So four of these ignore his defense, which I think is enough to kill him. Three damage each. That's 12 damage. He has... 11 health, so he just died, so we'll use the revive token. So our revive token is already gone. And you know what I don't know is does he get a turn when you use the revive token? You're supposed you pop right back up, but if it's in the middle of a turn, I'm gonna double check the rules real quick and see if it's at the end of a turn. So the rules just say that they can recover with full health, full sanity, and recover a grit. It does not say immediately, so I'm going to assume it's at the end of a turn, just like if they were KO'd. So that would be in the end of the turn. So now that means we come back to hold back the darkness. Double fours. Ugh. Falling rubble.
The rocky ceiling of the mine shaft is unstable and prone to collapse. Each hero in the mines immediately takes D6 hits. So, red is our marshal, white is saloon girl. Ooh, she takes six hits, he takes three. So, let's. Marshall will defend. He defends them all. Saloon girl takes three wounds. Could have been worse. So, move, saloon girl move. Nah, she's not going anywhere. She will attack. She gets to reroll one for her axe. One critical, one regular hit. So she will put the first critical on the one that's attacking her. Well, no, she'll put it on this one here, the critical. So three plus her one damage plus her other one damage. She kills another one for another 30 experience points. And then she will put the regular damage on this one in front of her. Six will be enough to kill that one. For another 30 experience, and like every other adventure, she is destroying all the monsters, and the sheriff is just sitting there looking bored. Uh, so the sheriff can now attack because his initiative is higher. He misses, but he's going to use a grit. And he rolls a critical hit on... He's going to put it on this one here. Six is enough to kill it. Um, he would get to heal, but he gets his 30 experience. Um, plus 10, so 40 experience. And he gets to attack again because of his double shot rule. Where'd it go? Here it is. And he misses... Um, you know what? Mm, mm, he'll save his grit. All right. Tentacle attacks him. No way. So he takes nine damage. It's not enough to kill him this time. So that ends our turn. I won't forget the comforting presence to take one of those wounds away and give the saloon girl even more experience. We will, that ends the turn, we will hold back the darkness. <sighs> Ambush attack. There are fiendish creatures and demons in the dark places of the world. Ambush attack. Draw a threat immediately to ambush the heroes. So whenever we draw a threat card, one, two, or three, it's vampires, four, five, or six, it's not. It is not. Thank goodness. We have a hell vermin. So I have a little different colored hell vermin from the ones from the mines, uh, and it's an ambush attack. He's the... Marshall's being attacked, so the Hell Vermin will attack the Saloon Girl. Um, and it's an ambush. And as a recap, Hell Vermin are Initiative 6, Fear 2. Um, oh, I forgot to do the Fear on the Slasher. Um, regeneration 2, the Corruption Bite. So on a roll of a 6, you take a Corruption Hit. Um, and they are immune to critical hits and have 13 health. So this day is getting worse and worse. So the Hell Vermin gets to go first. He has three combat. So attacking our saloon girl. He does one corruption hit and one regular hit. So save the corruption hit. She does. Save against the two regular hits, and she does. A four and a five. Lucky, lucky, lucky. All right, now the saloon girl gets to attack. She gets to re-roll with her melee. So two hits, she's going to put them 
both on the Hell Vermin. So she's going to roll for damage. Two fours. Its defense is two, so basically her two extra wipe out the two defense, so that is eight damage on the Hell Vermin. Then she's going to use her holdout pistol. And she misses. And she forgot to move. And she doesn't get a grit. Now it is our... Uh, the marshal's going to go with the tentacle, since the tentacle hasn't fought yet. He's going to use his grit to re-roll. And he gets a critical. And he kills... That one for 30, 40 experience. He gets to heal a wound because of his ability. He heals a, he doesn't have any sanity, but he heals a wound. Um, and he gets to roll again, attack again. And he misses, and he has no no grit left. So that is the end of that turn. Comforting presence. We'll heal another wound. Give the saloon girl some experience. Now hold back the darkness. Can we do it? I doubt it. No, we don't. But nothing happens this go around. Then. The Hell Vermin goes, three combat on the saloon, oh, regenerates two wounds, three on the Hell, on the girl, up, one corruption hit, can she save the corruption, no, she takes corruption, can she save the wounds, she does save the wounds, so that takes her to three corruption, she has a max corruption of seven, so, saloon girl to move, no grit, to attack, she gets to reroll one, so two hits, criticals don't matter, damage, four and five and nine, enough to kill him. So she did a total of 13 wounds, I forgot to give her her experience last time, so that would have been 13. Is 65 plus over two turns, so it's 85. Now, this actually works out okay. So let's catch our breath. Saloon Girl gets D3 to heal D3, just one. She will take it on the wound. The Marshal can do D6. No way, and he doesn't have a grit. So, well, one is better than zero. Loot cards. So they each get two loot cards. Because it was two different attacks with two different... Oh, and I forgot... I forgot sanity. I forgot the fear. So that was two turns, so it's two, so four, so they each need to do four fear. So, Slew Girl's fear checks. Okay, she takes two sanity. Marshall's. He takes three sanity. So she is up to two sanity, and he is up to three sanity, and five wounds. Um... I don't believe I did the comforting presence at the end of that, so actually he's at four wounds. I'll double check that. So no, she did not do her comforting presence, uh, so that has been done. Um, but also I noticed that the, uh, the marshal did not activate that last turn, so he should have only rolled two horror dice. Um, 
but I will just play it like he failed both of the ones he should have rolled. Now for the loot cards. Mandy gets 20 experience and D times D6 times 25. Ooh. Wow, so she gets 150 and 20 experience. And she gets another 20 experience and an artifact. An artifact card. She draws. That's right, okay, mine artifact. A soul parasite. As you lean in for a closer look, the artifact lunges at you, attaching itself to your chest, and it, any attempt to remove it would surely kill you as it has embedded itself into your soul. May not be sold, traded, or discarded. Plus one initiative, plus two lore. Anytime you roll a one for move, take two sanity damage, ignoring willpower. Oh no. Um... Wow, I gotta figure out how to how do you get rid of that? Okay. So plus one initiative and plus two lore. I think I wouldn't really take that trade if I could help it. So her initiative is now six and her lore is now five. And every time she rolls a one, she takes two sanity damage. Oh, this is not going to be good. All right. Our marshal gets a dark stone and 30 experience and 25 gold and 30 experience. So, 60 experience, a dark stone, and 25 gold. That's his only dark stone since he sold his other last time they went to town. All right. Man, this has not been a good adventure so far. Hold back the darkness. Can we do it? We finally hold back the darkness. Move for Saloon Girl. Four. She says, has to go this way. One, two. She will look through. her five experience and draws a map card and it is the excavation chamber and I forgot to roll whether we do the advanced uh, or not I'll have to remember to do that next time so the excavation chamber draw an exploration token Marshall will go. Three. I think he was here, right? One, two, three. Since he is sitting in this room, I don't think he can scavenge that room. So, two encounters, a clue, so we do have a door. So both of them, one of these will be a door and one will be a gateway. So, we're just going to put the gateway here for ease, because we're not going out the door. So two encounters, and on a one, two, or three, we also draw a vampire encounter. And one thing, so, so far we've not had any vampire issues yet. Let me move this back some. So two encounters. Encounter. So the first encounter. Darkstone deposit. Shards of darkstone protrude from the walls here, giving the room a faint purple glow. Strength 5 plus test. If successful, gain a darkstone. Then roll a d6 on a roll of 1, 2, or 3. Something has been attracted by the dark stone and we are attacked. Okay, and then the second one is a cunning test. Warning from the grave, a skeletal figure slumped against the passage seems to have scratched a warning into the stone. So a cunning 5 test. 
If successful, gain 25 experience and take this card. Discard it, discard it at any time uh, during this adventure uh, to give a hero three extra dice on a skill test. Ah, oh, okay, so let's try that one. I think we'll do that one first. Um, cunning five, who has more cunning? She has three, so the sheriff, he will do a cunning five test. And of course we fail. Um, it does not appear to be, I have no grit, does not appear to be, oh, if failed, the warning is too late, draw a threat. Um, but we have to finish all these, we might end up having to draw two threats. Okay, so now we've got to do the strength test, and hopefully we'll pass that so we don't have a second, oh well, we could get a second attack regardless. So everyone has to do a strength five. So the saloon girl's strength is one, and she of course gets it, so she actually gets a dark stone. Um, and the Sheriff is strength three, and he gets three Dark Zone. Wow, I would have rather not had the attack, but okay. So, she gets one, he gets three, so they're each actually at three. No, oh, no, he has four Dark Stone. Now we have to roll a d6 on a one, two, or three. Something has been attracted by the Dark Stone. So we're already being attacked by one thing. Uh, so it's two. Okay. Get rid of that. All right, so for this one on a one, two, or three, it is, well, we'll just do it. So there are two attacks. Let's see if any of them are vampires. No, they're not. Wow. So we're just getting two attacks, and they're just regular attacks. So we're getting attacked by a slasher and P, hungry dead, and a corpse pile. Hungry Dead. Six Hungry Dead. Oh, that's going to be another long, long fight. All right, so I pulled out all everything we needed. So the corpse piles are an immobile item. Um, fear one, any hero adjacent to them takes a horror hit. At the end of each turn, roll a d6 for the corpse pile on a roll of four plus. Place a new Hungry Dead adjacent to it. If there are no empty space or no yeah empty spaces, every hero adjacent to the corpse pile takes one hit and does three damage. And uh, defense of two, health of six. The hungry dead, they're initiative two. They have fear uh, one. They're four plus, uh, two combat, five damage, health of two, but a defense of five. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I did it again. The Hungry Dead, under initiative one, melee, they're four plus one combat, three damage. Uh, they have one health but a defense of four. And they are a medium sized monster that can move two. So, alright, so to place these all in order. Um, And because they're, you're supposed to start at the door farthest away, I don't know which one to count. So we'll just, this looks farthest away. Then we have to go with um, these guys. Not that it ultimately matters. And the slasher. They're not ambush attacks, that is good. And so, here comes another long and brutal battle. So, hold back the darkness roll. Oh, okay. Well, at least the darkness doesn't move forward. But I remember, this is the falling rubble. So, D6 hits each. So, red is the marshal, white is the saloon girl. And they take five each, so... Red can be the marshal, and white can be the saloon girl. 
Um, so the Marshall takes one, and the Saloon Girl takes two. Uh oh. Saloon Girl rolled a move. Uh, she's not going anywhere. She doesn't get a grit. She will... Hmm. Yep, she's not going to move anywhere. She'll just use her holdout pistol. And she misses. All right. Next is the slasher who will one, two, three, uh, Marshall, four, five, six, saloon girl. Oh, so he's actually going here. He will attack with his two combat. Um, let me see. So fear two, the right mission adjacent. So no one was adjacent, has started one yet, adjacent. Uh, so one six, which is, oh, it doesn't do anything. Um, so one hit, let's see if he can defend it, he does. Now it is the marshal's turn, so fear two, horror hits, saves one. So if he takes another sanity, roll to move, nothing. He has to shoot at the slasher, he actually hits. Defense is four, so seven, so takes three damage and gets him 30 experience. Now it is the Hungry Grit Dead's turn. So she's here. One two, because they have to go for her, because she's not being occupied. One, two, two, so, all right, only one of them can attack. It is a combat of one, so attacking the saloon girl, hits, saloon girl, defends. Corpse pile does not produce another one. Oh, no one, one, two. And that is the end of the turn. Now let's see if we can hold back the darkness. Seven, we do not. Growing dread card. Saloon girl moves. Nope, she will attack. She gets to re-roll because of her hatchet. So a critical and a regular. She's going to let's see how many. Oh, his health is six. He's got three. So she's going to assign the critical first on him. And does five, which kills kills him. So that's five thir thirty experience. 15 plus 5 each for the 3 that got him to his death total. And then she'll do her regular one on this one. That was actually kind of, well, yeah, no. So here's 6. So she kills this one, the only female one there. Uh, 10 experience. Um, she did start her activation she needs to take three sanity which I forgot one for being adjacent to the hungry dead and two for being next to the slasher and she saves them all okay now it is senior Marshall's turn so he will attack and he misses and he has no grit oh but let's see now move Nope, still has no grit. So now it is the Hungry Dead's turn, so doesn't matter. We'll pile in. Just one will attack each of them. They have one attack. Red is attacking the Marshal. White is attaching, attacking the Saloon Girl. And they both hit. The Marshal was not adjacent to anyone this last turn, so um, 
Red is Marshall's defense. White is Saloon Girl's defense. And they both defend. Now, and now for the end of turn, a four. So we make a we make a new one. All right. Now hold back the darkness. Double sixes. Oh, that's the good one. We needed that. Um, stubborn resolve. Each hero may immediately heal D6 wounds, sanity, any mix, or recover a grit. So, red is the marshal, white is the saloon girl, and they are each doing a mix of stuff. So, saloon girl will heal a wound. The marshal will heal, I think, three wounds and two sanity. Three wounds and two sanity. No, three, four wounds and one sanity. Changed my mind. So he is now at one wound, one san or two sanity. And I have not been doing comforting present at the end of each turn. Um, but I will do it for the last turn and he can have his other sanity. The other ones, it's too late. She gets some experience. Swing girl's racking up on the experience. And... So that was holding back the darkness. So now it is Swoon Girl's chance to move. She's going to stay where she is. She will attack. She gets to re-roll. Nothing. Regular hit on this guy. One, even with her stuff, so nothing. All right. The Marshal gets to attack. He hits. He's going to put it on this guy here. Seven is enough to kill it, which means he gets another attack, which is a critical, which he kills a second one. So that's two. He gets to heal a wound and a sanity for each one of those, or a wound or a sanity. Sorry, he's a wound and a sanity. Comforting Presence is a wound or a sanity. Um, He's actually healed now, amazingly, um, and then he gets his, he gets 40 total experience for killing the two of them. 10 each, plus he gets 10 each extra for his, uh, his cleaning up the west. Alright, now it is their turn. One, move, move, move. Uh, they're one combat each, so red attacks the marshal, white attacks the saloon girl. Okay, and they both hit. Red is marshal defense, saloon girl is... Uh, so marshal takes a wound, saloon girl does not, and we did not do our horror for last time. They were both adjacent to two of them, so red is marshal... White is a saloon girl, so they each take one more sanity. And now the corpse pile. Makes another one. We'll just bring him back. Alright, hold back the darkness. We don't. And get there. Alright, saloon girl. Rolls to move. Nope. Attacks. She gets to reroll one of them at least. She gets to hit. Five is enough to kill one. So that's ten experience for her. Marshall gets to roll to move. No grit. He's going to attack with a shotgun. He gets a critical hit, which means it's at least one damage, so that's one. He gets to shoot again and he misses. So he gets to heal a wound and a sanity and he gets 20 experience. And now they get to move again. One, 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 two. Oh, back to the same. White, saloon girl, red. They miss both. Good. Corpse pile. Does not make one. 
hold back the darkness. We do not. Which means a darkness card. Strength of the void. All void enemies are now plus one defense. Stays in play. That's okay. Saloon Girl will then get... She's going to activate, so she has to roll for her whore hits. She saves them. Roll to move. Nothing. Rolls to attack. One hit gets to reroll because the axe. Still just one hit, so she'll put it on the one right in front of her. Four, five, six is enough to kill her. So ten more experience. And that is the end of her turn. We're going to keep using the shotgun. Uh, he has one horror hit, and he takes a horror. And then a roll to move. Nope. Attack. Six, seven, or eight are critical hits. Um, got a sanity, so that means this guy dies. He gets to roll another one. Three misses. All right, one, two, three goes for the saloon girl. Four, five, six comes to the sheriff. He will attack. Um, hits. Can we defend? Yes, we defend. Does it, do we get another one? No, we do not get another one. So that is the end of that turn. Comforting Presence heals that one's sanity. She gets some experience. I'm gonna have to count this up in a minute. And hold back the darkness. Seven, we do not hold back the darkness again. Um, saloon Girl moves. Well, Saloon Girl rolls for horror, and she fails, so she takes sanity. Rolls to move. She's not going in. Well, no. Yeah, she's going to go here. Start getting closer. No, actually, she's going to go here. That's three. She's going to attack the corpse pile. One hit gets to reroll. Still one hit. The corpse pile. Look at that. Corpse Pile has a health of 6 and a defense of 2. Um, so she's going to do 6, 7, 8 damage. That's enough to actually kill it. So she gets 40 experience for killing the Corpse Pile. And now the Fear Nope. Move. No grit. Did take a sanity. And I actually am going to move those two. I'm not going to leave, but one, two, so he's adjacent and he can heal that sanity at the end. Attack. And he missed. And that is not helpful, because I have no grit. So, we'll attack the sheriff. Hits him. And it's defended. And that is the end of the turn. Heals his one sanity. A little more experience for the saloon girl. And now hold back the darkness. Ugh. Seven again. No, and another darkness card. The Dark Omen, the darkness grows even closer. The darkness immediately moves one step forward on the depth track. Each hero gains 20 experience and may recover a grit. So one more, which does a Growing Dread card. We get 20 experience points each. Swim Girl's actually at her max grit. I should have used some along the way, but our hero needs it. Oh, this is bad. Saloon Girl moves. Um, she's going to go ahead and go here so we can go ahead and start heading out the door. And he's going to attack. He's going to use his grit to re-roll that. 
It's a critical, so he kills it. So that's 20 experience. He has nothing to heal. And that is the end of this fight for right now. So now we catch our breath. They both went, so they D3 each. Red is the marshal. White is the saloon girl. Uh, so two each. Well, he has nothing to heal, but she does. So she'll heal a sanity and a wound. They each have... Get to pick... How many did we do? Two. So they each get two loot cards. So we will do the loot cards. Maybe we can get another artifact that kills us. Alright, so Mandy gets a sack of gold dust and a gear. So she's 20 experience and 100 gold and a gear card. Her gear card, she gets a tonic token. That could come in handy. And then our marshal gets oh, two dark, two more dark stone, our dark stone shards, and forty experience, which he needs more than her. Okay, so now what they are going to do is have to hold back the darkness again. So, we'll hold back the darkness, and then, well, she looks through, and she sees the swamps. Um, so let me set that up so that we can move on to the next turn. So the first thing to do is to actually pull a map tile for Jargono, because she did look through the door, um, and it is a swampy trail. So I will put out the Swampy Trail. I have pulled out all of the cards. Um, uh, I added the Swamp Slugs into the deck because they're a swampy kind of monster as well. Uh, so I will put this map tile out. I will throw the Encounter tab on it. That would be the end of this, this turn. And I think this is a good place to start and come back and finish this up with only five shots left on the darkness, so we'll see how this goes uh, when I return.